Welcome. Welcome to this day of uh, where we will celebrate the Reformation and we will also celebrate the confirmation of Annika. So welcome to Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Berkeley, where we are doing our best to get through this time together. We welcome to visitors on Zoom and YouTube. And please, if you are not familiar with the church, you want to learn more about it, visit our website at www.sothb.org. On this day, we uh, continue to celebrate the season of Pentecost, of the spirit flowing through us, empowering us, and keeping us in God's love. We will now begin with the welcome statement as read by Annika's father. Welcome to longtime Lutherans, Christians of every tradition, and people new to the faith. Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts, or do not believe. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to people of every age and size, color and culture, gender identity, sexual orientation, and marital status, ability, and challenge. Welcome to believers, questioners, and questioning believers. This is a place where you are welcome to celebrate and sorrow rejoice and recover. This is a place where lives are made new. Welcome on this day. We will now begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation, amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we have failed to think of the air, harm done to the air, water, land, plants, animals, and all creation. We fail to conserve energy and follow the way of consumerism. We take for granted the many gifts you give us through creation, and we forget your abundance and presence in our lives. Gracious one, we are in need of you. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy poured into us, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to have the word for all ages. And I'm going to ask uh, Sam to move to the next slide. And I'm going to invite you to stay on the slide to not sw switch to speaker mode, because this is, does anybody know what this is? I bet some of you do. This is the Luther Rose. This is what Annika is receiving as a present, I believe, stitched by Lori, and I know Candy did some work about it, and Candy wrapped it up, and she received that yesterday. But this is the Luther Rose, and it's a good day to read what Martin Luther says about the Luther Rose. You know, actually, the rose was Luther's symbol since around 1520. In 1530, uh, the, um, the leader of the area where Luther was, uh, decided that he would commission a rose particularly for Luther. So here's how Luther describes how he sees this rose. And he writes it to Lazarus Spengler. He says, great peace to you from the Lord. As you desire to know whether my painted seal, which you sent to me, has hit the mark, I shall answer most amiably and tell you that my original thoughts and reasons about why this seal is the symbol of my theology. First, that there is a black cross in the heart, which retains its natural color, so that I myself would be reminded that faith in the crucified one saves us, for the one who believes from the heart will be justified. Although it is indeed a black cross, which mortifies and which should also call, cause pain, it actually leaves the heart as the heart is natural. It does not corrupt nature. It does not kill, but keeps alive. In Romans, it says they shall live by faith, but by faith in the crucified. Such a heart should stand in the middle of a white rose to show that faith gives joy, comfort, and peace. In other words, it places the believer into a white, joyous rose, for this faith does, does not give peace and joy like the world gives, but it gives peace and joy like the cross of Christ gives. That is why the rose should be white and not red, for white is the color of the spirits and the angels. Such a rose should stand in a sky blue field, symbolizing that such joy in spirit and faith is a beginning of the heavenly future joy, which begins already, but is grasped in hope, but not yet revealed. And all around this field is a golden ring, symbolizing that such blessedness in heaven lasts forever and has no end. Such blessedness is exquisite,
beyond our joy and goods, just as gold is the most valuable, most precious and best metal. This is my theology. I wanted to show it to you in good friendship, hoping for your appreciation. May Christ, our beloved Lord, be with you, your spirit until your life hereafter. These are the words of Martin Luther. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the witness of Martin Luther that renewed the church in spirit that brought us back to focus on the life-giving love of Jesus Christ given in his life, his death and resurrection. Today, let us also be lifted up as your people who are baptized and resurrected to live the life of hope. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. The covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that will I make with them the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. Second reading, Romans 3, 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God for no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Holy Thanks. wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, 
If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, so the son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer and our guide. Beloved people of God, I just want to note that we have Annika and her parents, parents and uncles and maybe aunts and grandparents, all of you are here today. Um, I'm so glad that you're here and I'm hoping my internet, I just got a sign, I'm doing something with my internet to make it a little better. So bear with me. Um, This should help. I'm going to keep on going as this tries to get resolved. Okay. So confirmation itself is an affirmation of our baptism. In our die to Christ and we are raised to Christ daily. What does this mean? And what does this really mean in our lives today? That's, that's a big question. Monica, for many years, the culture has said going to church is important and the society has supported church community. But today it's a different story. We can take this time to say it gives an opportunity to open the door to ask questions that were not asked so much before because church seemed just so much a part of society. But today we can ask, why is baptism important? And as your pastor, I say, looking at our baptism is like looking at that Luther rose daily, seeing the cross at the center, saying we die with Christ and are raised to Christ. We can say we are actually resurrected people. But in that, we are very conscious of those who are in need. You know, we can all have our different ways of articulating about what our baptism means. And Lori gave me a perspective. She says, to be a baptized Lutheran in this time is her baseline, the core of who she is. No matter what happens, no matter how hard times are, how far I stray, how confused I become, how alone I feel, God is there. And she says, I have faith that I will always be his beloved child of God. You know, the Gospel of John reading, uh, probably caught many of your attention, certainly catches mine. It brings to mind the truth that sets us free, the truth that we actually symbolic of our baptism too, the truth that God loves us first, that before anything we can do or say, before any mistakes we say, it is God's love that is the foundation. That is the truth. We are loved and precious in the sight of God. But in the book of John, Jesus holds up the light to bring the people he is talking to, in this case, it's Jewish people, back to their humanity because they forgot. They actually forgot that they were once slaves in Egypt. Now, this is not to say this is a specific thing about Jewish people. This is about all of us, for we are all in need of God's help and God's compassion but often we need to remember things in our lives that where we were in need as well, that helps us get to our compassion. People in our time forget this truth and Jesus continues to shine a light about how we can look at our own lives and remember this truth, that we can be in this day enslaved by the news. And often you hear this word in the United States going around called fake news. What is fake news? And then what is truly important in life? 
This gives us a chance to stop and think of the effect of culture on us. This story can show how we can get caught up with the ways of the culture that tell us that we do have to work for God's love versus this actual story that says God's love is there for us no matter what. I want to share with you the story of Cleavon. Uh, he was a young writer when I met him. He was assigned to spend time with an elderly woman in a nursing home in Oakland. He entered with his truth into that relationship. He said, I was gonna save her. That was his truth. Cleveland, also an African-American, as Evangeline was, was from, they were both from the same parts of Louisiana. So they had a bond, a common language, but they had a distance of ability and location. But after weeks of talking to Miss Evangeline, Cleveland came to write this beautiful statement about truth. He said, I walked in there and I looked at her, this 99-year-old woman, with missing teeth, sinking into her mattress. And I thought I could save her. I could make her life better. I could like make her be a person of value. But he said in the end, she taught me that I was looking at the world in a less than compassionate way. She showed me that that was unnatural and opened my eyes to the way of compassion, which is natural. He found his truth, and in this relationship, it touched his heart and called him to return to compassion. In this relationship, the cross was made known. In our reading from Jeremiah, it says the love of God is written in our hearts. Compassion, love, care, understanding. This is what's natural to us that we get recalled to time and time again, that we might walk with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. In Paul's letter to Romans, the truth is also we all sin, we all fall short. That is a true reality of our life. And as people of faith, we do not shy away from this reality. We know the truth. When we get up in the morning, we're gonna make a mistake. And when we make a mistake, we can trust in God's grace. We might not look upon somebody as our brother or sister or sibling, but then we get called back to that reality that they truly are. So that we then again can remember God's grace, that we can think that the person who is sleeping on the street blocks away is also our sibling. We know that there are systems in which we live in that affect us. But we also know there's our individual needs that affect us too. But we are people that live in a time where racism, sexism, ableism, xenophobia, the news of children at the border, separated from their families, these are things we know are part of our reality. And sometimes it can be very overwhelming and we need God's help. And God's help is here that we can be called back again and again to love and compassion that is in our hearts. So for Annika, we spent time in confirmation to prepare you for this day, but also prepares you for a greater role in the church and in the world. You are moved into a new life. The life you had before was incredibly valuable, but you are now in this time and space. You are confirmed. You clearly articulated the systems that oppress people and awareness that individually we can mistake, make mistakes yet we can always act, ask for forgiveness. You also talked about the effect of technology and what that means or how that can hinder us from spreading what we call the good news of Jesus. It is something to continue to be in conversation with, with people around you and with the church as the world moves forward probably even deeper into this time of technology. But we do wake up every morning and we can remember that we are baptized and in the baptism we are resurrected and resurrected to the natural way of being. One of the other things that we looked at was Luther's small catechism and in that we looked at the Lord's Prayer and in the Lord's Prayer we hear the words what does this mean which is really 
Luther echoing the words of his son, what does this mean? What does it mean that in the Lord's Prayer we say, give us our daily bread? Martin Luther says, God gives us bread to all saints and sinners without even asking. The bread is already there. So when we pray for daily bread, we thank God for it and remember to share. Daily bread includes all that is needed for this life. Good food, clothing, faithful spouse, good weather, job, home, peace, friends, neighbors, loving family, health, respect, and good governance, governance too. God intends good things for you, Annika, and God intends good things for all of us and for everyone. And when we don't have these things, we can look to faith in God and continue to trust that we are loved by God. We are set free in this love to work towards this common good where everyone has respect and care and love and understanding. I want to repeat Lori's words once again, because Lori is certainly in this church an elder of the faith. She says what it means to be a baptized Lutheran. It is the core of who I am, no matter what happens, how hard the times are, or how far I stray, how confused I become, how alone I feel God is there, and I have faith that I will always be a beloved child of God. Annika, you are a beloved child of God. You are invited to move forward and continue to talk and stay in discussion to figure out what all this means in your life, that you're baptized and confirmed. It's not just a one-day event. It's going forward and continually asking these questions. What does this mean? What it does mean for you, I know, is that you are an artist. And I'm going to close this sermon by sharing some of your artwork. And then the artwork is in other places. It's going to be uh, shared in the meditative music as well. And also there's a, one of your pictures during the, the rite of confirmation. You are a beloved child of God. So here are a few pictures we're gonna to go to. Uh, and Sam's gonna move us onto that now. And I just want to take a moment to say this is Annika's picture of Pentecost that she drew that we showed on Pentecost Day, showed the relationship, the Holy Spirit that comes out and touches everybody's hearts. May you all be blessed by the Holy Spirit this day. Amen. Felicia and I will lead you in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. We believe in a faithful God. Who has come in Jesus to reconcile and make new. We trust God who calls us to be the church, to love and save the whole humanity, 
to serve justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life and death and life beyond death, God is with and in us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In your love, draw our hearts to you, fill our minds, inspire our imaginations, reign us in, that we may wholly be yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us. We pray as you will, and we trust for the glory and welfare of all creation. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In your love, you create our earth filled with living things of every kind. Sustain the intricate connections among plants, insects, animals, and organisms we don't even know or recognize. Bless the work of scientists who help us extend neighbor love to the natural world. Sustain in us with the spirit to meet the challenge of the climate crisis. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In our love, you guide with justice. Inspire leaders for truthful conversations and wise policies. That decisions are made for the good of all. That all, all our works begin, continue, and end in you. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who need healing hope or restoration this day, especially Ava, Gina, Carol, Doral, Meg, Bob, Frida, Esther, Gifford, Frank, Florence, Rosie, Tom, Don, Nina, and Lynette. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In your love, we remember the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit reached out and touched the hearts of all who were there. Touch the hearts of all who are here today, especially Annika, this day of her confirmation. Fill her with your peace. Raise her every day as your child, a child of the resurrection. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For whom and what else do the people of God pray? Please unmute to share your prayers. I pray for my friend Dove with her cancer diagnosis. Please give her uh, strength as she deals with this. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In your I love, pray for the next grain. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In your love, we remember those who were dear to us and now rest in you. We give thanks to Martin Luther and all who seek to reform and renew your church. Give us courage to live out your gospel, revealing your love until our days on earth have ended. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite you all to unmute as you wish uh, to share your faces if you're not. And this is a time we're gonna share the peace of Christ with each other. Feel free to clap, make noise, uh, say a word. So here it is. The peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. Good morning, everybody. Peace the Lord. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with God you. Peace. peace, peace. 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 Peace.
Please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Today we begin our annual stewardship drive. Over the coming weeks, we'll be focusing on the different parts of uh, church and what it, they all mean to us. Um, today, Angela has shared some words of her viewpoint of worship. offering for this season will go to Berkeley Food Network. The goal of Berkeley Food Network is to create a Berkeley where no one goes hungry. Using an innovative community-centered approach to food sourcing and distribution, they are providing easy and convenient access to healthy, high-quality, free food for people who need it. We will move into the offering prayer. Gracious God, you have given us much this day. The wheat and grapes which found our feast, the wit and will to transform them into bread and wine, and the precious presence of your Son, who transfigures and redeems all that we have broken and lost. Send us out now to care for this vulnerable earth with the saving presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to move into this special moment called the Rite of Confirmation, and it's an affirmation of baptism. I'm gonna ask you to visualize that uh, Annika's family uh, is surrounding her first, her mother and father who are in different places right now and her grandparents and her brothers and the um, godparents and also Jeanette as her mentor and other people that are in the family. And then as we as a congregation will surround them Annika, I don't know if you know this, but actually there's a lot of youth around the world today that are being confirmed on Reformation. In 2004, I went to uh, Wittenberg, Germany, 
where I was there on, on Reformation Day and a thousand youth marched up to that door where Martin Luther had nailed the 95 theses and there they were confirmed. You too join with that, uh, with all people today, all people that have been confirmed in the, before and all the people that are, will be confirmed after you. So welcome. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Annika, one with us in the body of Christ who is making public affirmation of this baptism. And now we will have congregational representatives uh, share words. As council president and godparent, I present Annika, who desires to make public affirmation of her baptism. As Annika's mentor, I join with Felicia in presenting Annika. And let us pray, moving on to the next slide. Yes. Merciful God, we thank you for these whom you have made by your own water and word in baptism. You have caught Annika to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gift and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Annika, we're now going to prepare for a profession of, profession of your faith. Uh, people just listen. Um, Annika, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. Do you reject sin? and confess the face of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Okay, I'm gonna invite the whole congregation to uh, unmute. And we're going to have a cacophony of voices. We're going to do the Apostles' Creed. I will ask the question, and then there is plenty of time for you all to respond along with Annika. Do you believe in God, the Creator? Believe in God, believe in God the Creator. Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I'm moving on to the slide that says, do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Annika, you have now made a public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, moving on to the next slide. I am asking you, do you promise to support this and pray for Annika in her life in Christ? If so, please respond. We do. We do. We ask God to help and guide us. So I imagine that her fan, we visualize the family and the family that is with Annika at this moment to lay their hands on her. Uh, we invite the congregation, if you wish, to raise your hands as a sign of being connected with Annika as we pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Annika the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, 
the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We rejoice in you, Annika, in the life of baptism as a confirmed member of the church, centered in the grace of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will now prepare for Holy Communion in this sacred time. We remember that the early church began in homes where people shared the word and communed together. In this time, we too worship in our homes and commune at a distance via the internet, still gathered together as a people of faith with the real presence of Jesus Christ. So people tend to have a, a bit of bread, a little bit of juice or wine. And with this, we gather and say this, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We prepare for the Lord's Prayer. This is also another time that people are invited to unmute and just share in the cacophony of voices. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as we pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, Please join us for Zoom coffee hour. Uh, just stay on the Zoom after the postlude. So Annika has chosen the recipient for the thank offering for November and December. Uh, we're going to start that, what she has proposed next week, but she's going to tell us about us now. I also want to, when we come to the blessing, um, Annika wrote the blessing and is going to say the blessing for us today. So Annika, please share with us. Um, Greenpeace is the organization I'm choosing for the thank offering starting next week through December. Greenpeace is a nonprofit organization founded almost 50 years ago that works for the good of the world in a communal sense. Their mission is to protect biodiversity, prevent pollution, end nuclear threats, and promote peace. They stand together and rally for change against all the greatest environmental and human threats facing us today. I chose this organization because I feel like many of the issues we have now are because of damage to the environment and will only get worse until something changes as soon as possible. In order for something to change, we need attention to be brought to the problems by spreading awareness. I'm specifically choosing Greenpeace International because these global problems require global solutions. I hope that we are all able to help contribute to this action, whether by making choices in our everyday lives to be more environmentally conscious or by spreading awareness in our communities. That being said, I'd like to share the blessing I wrote. May God bless you and keep you. May you be filled and treated with love and compassion. May you carry yourself with resilience when struggles come your way. May you care for those who surround you as well as those in the distance. May you remember to view what you have with gratitude, especially all creation and those near to your heart.
peace, treasure and tend to the creation God made and loves. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God.